There's certainly a case for the police to answer, to explain how, their, how and why uh, their tactics changed on that occasion and how they came to target the particular people they did for arrest. The people who were arrested on that day, um, finally it ended up being eight people, were, were all, almost all, people who were involved in some way in the High Court injunction proceedings. It's quite clear that the people they were arresting were also people that had already been named on the injunction. Those people were arrested to order. And they arrested people for some quite serious charges. Definitely uh, convictions for any kind of violence um, or assault, which is what most people were arrested for, assault police, um, would definitely have strengthened the idea that we were a violent campaign who would stop at nothing to hurt the workers. I think that that you know, having those those convictions would have been very useful to them. But every time they arrested someone, they would pass the information to the lawyers of Edo in the injunction case. I think that the effect of, of uh, those arrests uh, provided EDO with a case that they didn't have previously of actual harassment. At the end of the day, when the interim injunction was imposed, the judge allowed protests to continue in a sense unrestricted, but it was confined to the grass verge opposite Edo and BM. If you literally stepped off this grass verge, which was only two metres in width, onto the road, even one foot, uh, you would be liable to be arrested and you would be liable to be remanded immediately. Would you mind staying up on the uh, verge, sir? You've uh, read We're the order. To walk along this road. Right, you've actually read the order time and time again. You're in breach of the order. Are right. you aware of that? No, no, you're not. That's correct. OK, you would be in breach of the order. I do actually think that probably the judge, when he, he put that clause in, didn't realise how small the grass verge was. I, I think benefit of the doubt that he wouldn't have said that had he realised how dangerous it was. I mean, he really didn't understand the location or anything like that. So the judge, had, the, the judge didn't know what he was doing when he gave these these terms. How come he can kill me, but I can't kill you? However, he did accept that we shouldn't film. Which actually put us in a very vulnerable position because it then meant that we couldn't actually film any actions by the police or more significantly any actions by security guards. It meant that this goon could run around and basically assault people uh, with us not being able to produce any evidence that he'd done so. I think Mark Lynch um, was employed by Guide Security and Guide Security were contracted by Edo uh, to provide security for them and um, during the injunction they were supposed to be uh, implementing the, the terms of the injunction, which meant that they, ha they had to go around handing out, or Mark Lynch had to hand out um, these bits of paper. Whilst the injunction was in force, he was kind of take, obviously taking a great uh, delight in, in this kind of um, this increase in his powers. Really enjoyed the authority of it, really enjoyed being able to serve this very official looking injunction on people. But he went far beyond that. His job was not just merely to make it. His job was not merely to make people aware of the injunction, which obviously everybody was aware of anyway, but was to um, actively intimidate His people. general kind of attitude is being kind of is making it quite personal. He wants to get people. Yeah, he was pretty keen to make sure people got these bits of paper. He had to have um, a sort of mate to film him doing this, to get evidence of people being served with the injunctions. Well, it's recording now, Mark. Turn the video record. It's recording. See that pattern up there? Yeah. Right. One's in. One's in, one's out. And one's out. All right. Present to serve the uh, orders today is myself, Mark Lynch, and John Bradley, and Tony Reader. So right now, it should say stand by, yeah? No, now you record. I hope you've recorded it. Yeah, right? we have recorded it. Right, come with me, John. Do you want to start filming then, Mike? Yeah. Do not wish this strange man to touch me. The employees of the company were, were designated protected people, 
So they they were not supposed to be filmed. And a protect, the protected person within the definition of the injunction what included a security guard. Who kind of took full advantage of the situation of not being able to be filmed. Now this placed the protesters outside Edo in a, an extremely difficult situation. How can we record your instructions for evidential purposes when if he records you, it's a breach of the injunction? The minute we pointed them in the direction of the building, or any of the employees, we we ran the, the risk of being arrested for breach of the injunction. 432, if you'd like to read that. What is it? You will be arrested if you film, carry on film. So people we did used to go and try to respect as much as possible the terms of the inter-injunction while still filming, and that meant a lot of um, people taking cameras and, and turning them only on the you know, away from the factory and towards the demonstrators. But that was always a difficult, a difficult round and people used to have to argue the toss over that. He hasn't been videoing. He's been videoing, not him, he's been videoing. Right, has he had the video camera out? He has had the video no, camera out. Hand on, if it's not been on. And people used to take fake cameras up there, you know, made out of cardboard boxes, and people would just kind of really push that. And it was something that we argued a lot in court and tried to make the judge aware of, of the danger that we were in because of this rule. And the, first, the first time a security guard was, was being very obnoxious, somebody took out a video camera to, to, to record it, because, as should have happened. Um, and he found himself arrested by the police and spent a week in, in remand in, in Lewis Prison. Paul Robinson was acting as a legal observer on that day, filming the actions um, of, of the security staff. The security guard involved went over and seized his camera. He called the police, he got them up there, and then got the police to arrest me, which they did, carrying out his orders. The breach being that he was filming a protected person outside Edo. While we were in the police station, Chief Inspector Kerry Cox intervened. There was a telephone call from her, and she said, in effect, that it was right that he should be um, restrained, detained for breach of the High Court injunction and ultimately that's what he was charged with. He spent several days in custody at Lewis Prison before a Crown Court judge finally granted him bail. I, di I didn't have a chance to see my solicitor when I was in there at all. Now, he should never have been in custody. He wasn't even named in the injunction. It's an absolute disgrace that Edo can hire people and put them under the terms of the injunction and get them to be protected persons that these people are protected persons and what they're doing is harassment themselves. The campaign became, uh, got a lot more momentum and also became very creative. Obviously, no matter how angry you get, your pencils off as a work of art and not for throwing out people video cameraing you whilst you have no rights to do the same to them. There was a life drawing exhibition, I guess taking inspiration from uh, the sort of courtroom pictures where um, where uh, you know you're not allowed to film in court or take photos in court, so there are artists that draw pictures of the scene, and essentially that's what people did. People just brought uh, pens and pads and just drew the factory and drew the employees and the cars and the security guard and everything because you can't stop someone from drawing. But we always try to use a little bit of humour more to keep ourselves going, but also to try and make the point in lots of different levels. <laughs>